the importance of our new paper that appeared in, in um, ASN Neuro uh, last week um, shows, shows for the first time that um, uh, amino acid fermentation can also participate in the dysregulated growth of the tumor cell. Uh, and the amino acid that we're speaking predominantly about is glutamine. And we tested all the other amino, all 20 amino acids. We interrogated the cancer cells, both mouse and human glioblastoma cells. We interrogated them to ask which of the, what fuels could they use uh, to, to maintain their growth. So the way we do this is very simple. We just take the tumor cells and we grow them in saline, salt solution. And of course, there's no food. There's nothing for them to eat. And then you take and time them to see how fast they die uh, with no food. And mouse cells, because they have a very high basal metabolic rate, seven times faster than that of the human, they die quick when you take away their fuels. Mouse cells will die in 24 hours. Um, human, human cells uh, will die in about 72 hours, 48 to 72 hours with no fuel, just in, a, in what we call a buffered saline solution. And then what we do is we simply add individual amino acids uh, back and we see uh, whether or not uh, uh, the, the viability of the cells is improved. And what we see, uh, we do this both in the presence and absence of glucose. So glucose alone will keep the cells alive longer, but then they die because they, they don't have any, any nitrogen source. Um, so, and we do it without glucose. So we just do it in pure nothing, and then we add glucose, and then we add individual amino acids back. And what we see is, is when we add the amino acid glutamine, these cells explode in, in, in growth capacity uh, relative to all other amino acids. Now, we found a little bit of stimulation from glutamate uh, because it's the, it's, the, it's the first product that glutamine is metabolized to. Uh, but it's not nearly as powerful as glutamine. None of the other amino acids had any come close to how powerful glutamine is. So, so the question is, is uh, and when you have glucose and glutamine, the two pathways, the two fuels are synergistic in providing all of the metabolites and all of the energy needed for rapid dysregulated growth. So the, 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 the question is, how is glutamine able to uh, facilitate the growth of the tumor? Is it respired? Um, uh, through the respiration, it's called an anaplerotic respiratory process, where the carbons of glutamine enter into the TCA cycle to produce reducing equivalents, allowing oxidative phosphorylation to operate, producing uh, energy. Or is the glutamine fermented, um, which is generating energy through mitochondrial substrate level phosphorylation in the succinyl CoA ligase step within the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle? So what we, we, what we did and why this paper is so important is we were able to test this hypothesis many different ways. So we would take all of the glucose away from the tumor in the presence of oxygen and then give glutamine. And we found that the cells could survive with oxygen and glutamine in the absence of glucose. But then that doesn't tell us whether the glutamine is fermented or is respired. So we repeated the experiment this time, removing all the oxygen. We grew them in a deep hypoxia in the absence, in the absence of glucose. And we still got ATP production in these cells. Yes, it was significantly reduced, but it was still being produced. ATP was still being produced in the cancer cells in the absence of oxygen and in the absence of glucose. So the question is, where is that ATP coming from? So that we think it's coming from the substrate level phosphorylation in the TCA cycle. And we were able to show that when we use labeled glutamine, C13 glutamine, we were able to see C13 succinic acid as a waste product. That's the end product of the glutaminolysis pathway. Clearly, the glutamine is coming into the cell, metabolized to glutamate, to alpha-ketoglutarate, to succinyl-CoA, and we found labeled C13 succinate, the end product of the glutaminolysis pathway, meaning that the fuel is being dumped out. It's not anaplerotic to any extent. It's being dumped out as a fermentation end product, showing basically that um, these cells are using glutamine in a... In a um, non-oxidative way. Another experiment was 
we used cyanide, which blocks oxidative phosphorylation. And we were still able to see significant ATP in the absence of glucose in the presence of cyanide using glu glutamine as a fuel. And we were still able to see this succinic acid produced, clearly showing we disconnected oxygen and oxidative phosphorylation from a second major pathway in the mitochondria producing energy. This is unbelievable. So this is the missing uh, part of Warburg's central theory. Warburg had everything right, most everything, not everything. Uh, he, he was correct on knowing cancer was a mitochondrial metabolic disease, but he did not know there was a second major fuel that these tumor cells could ferment together with glucose. So this now opens up uh, the whole field of cancer to know these tumor cells are dependent on two major fermentable fuels. So we we're able to clear up the misunderstanding of, of Warburg. We're also able to say that the oxygen consumed in the tumor cells is not used predominantly for ATP synthesis through oxidative phosphorylation. Another mistake that Warburg and almost everyone else in the field makes, they think that the uh, consume oxygen consumption rate is being used for oxidative phosphorylation. We have clearly shown that this cannot be the case. The cells are taken in oxygen, yes, but they're not using it for ATP production through oxidative phosphorylation. It's the fermentation metabolism in the mitochondria itself and in the cytoplasm through substrate level phosphorylation. This is the new thing. This will lead to the, to the eventual management uh, of cancer because we now, know how to, we now know how to kill the beast without toxicity. These were in vitro experiments done in, because we need to ferret out mechanisms of how cells are surviving in vivo. We bring them into the culture dish. Now, people will say, oh, well, that's all in the culture. You have no clue. We grow, when we grow these glioblastoma cells in the mouse, and we simultaneously target glucose and glutamine using drugs and diet, we get a very powerful, uh, very powerful effect shutting down uh, the glucose and glutamine pathways. Extremely powerful with minimal of any toxicity. This, this is the reason we, we, the mechanism is shown in vitro and the outcome in vivo is clear based on the mechanisms, the hypothesis, cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disease driven by a fermentation metabolism. The fermentation is happening in the mitochondria and it's happening in the cytoplasm. So if we know that, then we design an experiment in vivo and show that if I target glucose and glutamine while transitioning the body to nutritional ketosis, I get massive reduction of the tumor without toxicity, reducing inflammation uh, and acidification, reducing all of the different characteristics that you see and killing tumor cells, mass killing of these tumor cells. So clearly, this is what's going to happen. This is just the beginning. We're going to perfect this system so that we can use it in, in, in all clinical studies of cancer should be targeting glucose and glutamine while the patient is in nutritional ketosis because the science tells us that's what we should do. The cancer cells are telling us this is what we should do. The cancer cells themselves are signaling us and saying, I am fermenting. Here is the evidence that I am fermenting. This is keeping my uh, energy and my growth capabilities. And we, we're looking at that and saying, okay, well, if I take away your energy, you should die. And that's exactly what happens. Not complicated. How did you know prior to this that glutamine was being fermented? I didn't, we didn't know. We knew glutamine was a powerful fuel for cancer, but we didn't know if it was fermented or not. I, I proposed that in my book originally. I said that I think glutamine is being used speculation I speculated for the first time that I think glutamine is a fermentable fuel. Ba based on the findings of uh, Hokotchka, years ago, Hokotchka did a very interesting experiment. He took animals and he had them diving, uh, animals that normally dive underwater like seals um, and, and porpoises and, and these kinds of animals, and he put them underwater for periods of time and then looked at the metabolites in the bloodstream. And the first thing he saw was a massive increase in lactic acid and succinic acid. And he speculated that the succinic acid that was there because of some sort of amino acid fermentation. But he never knew what the amino acid was or what was going on. He didn't know how it was being fermented. So I looked at his work and I said, I think it's being fermented in the mitochondria, uh, which, was, which was kind of uh, novel at the time. Uh, and I said, well, I speculate this is what it was. Then I worked with my good friend, uh, Christos Shinopoulos from Semmelweis University in Budapest, who's the world leader on mitochondrial substrate level phosphorylation. I ran my idea by him. He looked at it, he says, yeah, maybe. Uh, the way I set it up in my book was not accurate, but the concept could be very uh, viable. So then we started a, a, a seven year uh, plan 
uh, looking at mitochondrial substrate level phosphorylation under different conditions. And this paper is the culmination of all of the research that we did proving that mitochondrial substrate level phosphorylation is a major source of ATP and energy driving the dysregulated growth of these brain tumors. This is why when you go in vivo now, you can manage cancer by, by taking away the two fermentable fuels. And we plan to do, if we can get funding, we plan to go through all the major cancers, lung cancer, colon cancer, bladder cancer, breast cancer, because they all show lactic acid and succinic acid as, as waste products. All of these cancers are telling us the same thing. We are fermenting. You want to kill us, you got to take away the fermentable fuels. The cancer cells have been telling us this for decades, since the time of Warburg. But just nobody, it hasn't fallen on the, on the ear because everybody thinks it's being driven by genetic mutations. The mutations are an effect of all this process. They're not the drivers, they're the effects. We want to stop the growth. We want to prevent acidification. We want to clean up the microenvironment. You got to take away the two fermentable fuels and they can't burn fatty acids or ketones. And people say, oh, they can switch their flex. They're not flexible. We have already shown they're not flexible. They're restricted to a fermentation metabolism. So all this nonsense about they can burn fatty acids, they can't. I have the papers showing they can't do this. Nobody has shown cancer cells growing in the absence of glucose and glutamine on any other fuel besides glucose and glutamine. So, so, um, so this is where it is. It's just a matter of time. I don't know how long it's going to take the field to understand what I'm saying. But once they understand what I'm saying, the death rates of cancer are going to be dropping very significantly. So your speculation about glutamine being the other fermentable fuel in cancer cells turned out to be correct. What did you learn, though, about this seven years? What did you learn from this seven well, years? Well, you, you have to design experiments that give you clear, clear answers to support or not support your hypothesis. So the hypothesis is these cells, yeah, everybody knows glutamine. They, a lot of people call glutamine addicted. Cancer cells are glutamine addicted. But if you read the papers, they're saying glutamine is respired in a functional mitochondria using oxidative phosphorylation. That's wrong, that's not right. We don't rule it out completely, but it's not by itself uh, necessary or sufficient to drive the dysregulated growth. The fermentation metabolism is the big driver of this problem. Yes, you can get a little energy through oxidative phosphorus, but most of that oxygen coming into the cancer cell is not being used for ATP synthesis. It's being used for other things. So the driver of this whole process is the fermentation of glutamine and the fermentation uh, mechanism of, of glucose, throwing out lactic acid and succinic acid, acidifying the microenvironment. Cancer cells are telling us exactly uh, what's wrong with them, and they're telling us exactly how to manage them.